Cassandra, there you go again. Always saying what's gonna happen and oh, we should be careful and don't do this and be careful about that. Oh, Cassandra, you're always going on about it. But don't you see? I have been promised the most beautiful woman in the world, Helen. Helen of Sparta will soon be mine, and I am going to go there and claim her and take her and bring her to Troy, where she will become Helen of Troy. Oh, Cassandra. Well, that's what her brother Paris told her. He wouldn't listen to her. She tried warning her father, Priam, king of Troy, that Paris should not travel and claim Helen because she had all seen it the night before. She'd seen a vision where Troy was in danger and it was all because of some beautiful woman. He knew that this Helen was the one. So he begged his brother not to go and he told his father to not let her brother go, but they wouldn't listen to her. They never listened to her, even though she knew. When she was a young girl, she was in the temple for Apollo. There she stayed the night, and in the middle of the night, the god Apollo himself came in and saw Cassandra asleep. Oh, she was beautiful, and he wanted to give her a gift. He woke her, and he said, oh, Cassandra, you are beautiful, and I bestow upon you the gift of prophecy, of foresight. You will be able to know what is going to happen before it happens. You and you alone will know. Well, she thanked him and went back to sleep. Well, Apollo wasn't much for that. There was a reason he had given her the gift, to win her favor. So he took her in his arms and put her on the ground and got on top of her and said, oh, Cassandra, you shall be mine. And she pushed him away and said, no, no, I thank you for the gift, but no, no, I don't want to be with you that way. Oh, well then, said Apollo, I will take the gift. He couldn't take the gift back. Once bestowed on a mortal, it cannot be taken back. So instead he said, I will change the gift. Yes, you will see the future. But now, no one will ever believe you. What must that be like? To know what is going to happen to try to warn those in power, and yet to not be heard, to not be listened to, could drive a person mad after some time. <laughs> Helen came to Troy. <gasps> the city celebrated. Now they had the most beautiful woman in the world amongst them. Oh, they were so pleased that Paris had brought Helen with the help of Eros to Troy. This was a day of celebration, but not in Sparta, and not for Menelaus, her husband. He gathered the avowed army that said that they would always protect Helen from any danger, and they made a vow to return Helen to Sparta, and so they decided to create a war. And thus, Greece warred with Troy. Cassandra woke up. Father, there's, there are going to be battles. There are going to be killings. There is going to be fire. Father, we must gather our army. We must prepare. Oh, Cassandra, said her father, Priam. What are you going on about? There she goes again with her crazy ideas. Perhaps I should lock her up, this daughter of mine. And the war continued. For 10 long years, Cassandra tried to save and help as much as possible, but she fell on deaf ears. Eventually, Odysseus decided, I think it's time to end this war. 
he knew of a carpenter who was very, very skilled. That night, Cassandra woke up. Oh, she had had a terrible vision, a vision with an unnatural beast in the middle of Troy. And inside this beast seemed to be soldiers with weapons. And they seemed to be birthed from the belly of this beast. And they set the city on fire. Oh, it was a horrible vision. She ran to her father. Father, father, I've had this vision. There is this unnatural horse. And we must not have this horse. And Oh, Cassandra, what is this you talk about? Can't you see the war is over? For indeed, it seemed to be true. Outside the gates of Troy, the Greek army was gone. They had deserted. The ships in the harbor had fled. They had retreated. The war was over. Troy was in celebration. And not only had they retreated, but there in the field where the soldiers once stood was this magnificent wooden horse, obviously a gift. A beautiful stallion made out of wood stood there. They investigated this horse and learned that it had been intended to be a tribute to the goddess Athena from the Greeks, but, but if Troy were to bring it into the city, well, then it would be their tribute to the goddess Athena. So they should bring it into the city. No, said Cassandra, please, father, no, don't bring that horse in. Be, beware of Greeks bearing gifts. Do not bring that horse in. It will be the end, the end of Troy. Well, he didn't listen. He never listened. And they opened the great gates of Troy, and in came the great wooden horse. They put it in the middle of the city and prepared to bring it up to the temple of Athena. There was celebration in the streets. They were drinking wine. The war was over, and look at this magnificent horse. Cassandra did not celebrate. She did not sip any wine. She did not sleep at all. What must that be like to know with accuracy what is about to happen and yet for no one to believe you or take action or help to save? Oh, it can make a person mad. In the middle of the night, the belly of the beast opened, and out dropped Odysseus and his soldiers. They quickly ran and unlocked the city gates. Then the Greek army, which had not retreated at all but nearly hidden nearby, rushed into the city of Troy. They set fire to the buildings, and they slaughtered the people, the men, the women, the children. Paris was slain. Priam was slain. And Cassandra, oh, she was not slain. She was given as a war trophy consort to Agamemnon. And she left with him knowing that when she arrived at his home, she would be killed by his wife, Clemestra. Oh, Cassandra. Oh, Cassandra, if only they'd listened. Thank you.